Continuing with the topic of games, architectural presentations, site visualizations, and training simulations, we will next look at concepts encountered during import of buildings and other props. There are several options with regard to materials and baked textures and lighting. I've created a rustic building in Max. In this first version, it has only conventional mapping and materials. Once imported into my terrain scene, I can see that the single light is not quite enough for the building. Instead of adding more lights, I'll turn the emissive up a little. Without any shadows, the building lacks continuity within the scene. By adding vertex color, we can simulate a bit of radiosity and improve the look without adding the overhead of lights or shadows. The second version has had a light map added to the existing material using Map Channel 2. Any map types that have no direct X equivalent are added as diffuse stages. To set this up for easy import, I like to add the light maps to the glossiness slot in the max materials. Diffuse stages get added together, modulated, so that only the dark parts of the light map are added into the diffuse texture. On import, you may decide to increase the emissive for the wood material. The cabin shadow had the shadow itself as an opacity stage. As you can see, it merely needs to be inverted to set it right. The third cabin has all of its textures baked together as a single map. This is an excellent solution for architectural visualizations where V-Ray or Mental Ray are used to bake in sophisticated lighting solutions. However, in the case of textures with a lot of detail, such as the wood texture, there may be too much loss of detail. We'll go back to using Cabin 02. Interactivity, a key feature of real-time applications, can be added inside Creator without the need for imported animation in many cases. Here we will quickly add a rotate animation to the door. After temporarily turning off the camera start animation, we can see the animation at runtime. Animations may be triggered by other events. I'm setting up the handle to rotate when the door is picked. Sound is easily added to complete the interactive experience. Level of detail is achieved by using lower poly stand-ins and setting their culling distances accordingly. I've set the high poly antlers to disappear at 20 units and the low poly antlers to be visible from 20 to 150 units. Finally, we need to set the wall and floor collisions for the structure. Because it is all one object, it will need separate collision walls and floor. This has the advantage of being able to use lower poly objects for better frame rate. I've imported all of the pre-made collision objects into the scene, but when I try them out, I can't get through the door. When I unhide them, my naming and color conventions quickly show the imported objects. In order to get through the door, it looks like I need to move the door collision object into the actual door group. Even though it is hidden inside the other geometry, I'll go ahead and hide it to help frame rate. So now we have an environment complete with some simple interactivity. For more information on Esperient Creator, visit us on the web at www.esperient.com.